The key thing to think about with regulation is it's not how much we regulate, but it's what we regulate and how we regulate. This is At Brookings, a weekly in-depth look at issues behind the news. This week, balancing the costs and benefits of government regulation. Government regulations affect many aspects of our lives, from the cars we drive, to the medicines we take, to the water we drink. The tension lies in the cost of the regulations to business and the economy versus the benefits to the public in health, safety, and security. The nation needs better ways to evaluate the effectiveness of government regulations, argues senior fellow Michael Greenstone. The thing about regulations is they provide these benefits on the one hand, and on the other hand, uh, they raise the cost of doing business. Uh, there's, uh, and in raising the cost of doing business, that hurts employment and hurts wages. So Michael, some regulation is a good thing, but arguably, it comes at a cost. It's absolutely true that regulation has costs, and it, in raising the cost of doing business, uh, it will reduce the number of jobs. Uh, the right question, though, I think, in, in order to avoid a really tired debate that has gone on a long time, where you have some people say, well, regulation has costs and reduces jobs, and then the other people say, uh, well, regulation has benefits, we have longer, healthier lives. Those aren't really interesting points. What's interesting and important, I think, is whether or not the costs are greater than the benefits. Uh, and I think given that we're about to unleash a new set of regulations on the economy, it's really important that we have in place a good system for determining which regulations have benefits that are better, uh, higher than their costs. You've explained that it's a cost versus benefit type of equation. What's the relationship between regulation and innovation? The regular, regulatory system can inhibit or foster innovation. Uh, and one way it can inhibit uh, innovation is by allowing uh, existing companies to set up rules that prevent new companies from entering. And one way it can foster is by putting everyone on a level playing field and making sure that the interests of the whole economy are the interests that dominate in the regulatory process. Well, President Obama has proffered a regulatory reform proposal. What do you think of his ideas? The way we regulate now is an agency is asked to write a rule, uh, the agency puts forward the rule, and the agency tries to come up with some guess of what the costs and benefits will be in the real world. Uh, and then the regulation set out in the world, it gets put on the books, we, we never look back at it, and we never find out, did it work? Did it produce the benefits uh, we assumed and were the costs what we assumed they would be? And what the president's reform proposal does is say, well, that's not good enough. We actually have a chance to look back and find out, well, did the regulation do what we wanted it to do? And in the cases where the costs ended up being greater than the benefits, it gives an opportunity for reforming the regulation or even getting rid of it. Well, is the administration's proposal enough, or is there something more that we should be considering? Well, the administration made some important and really monumental steps in improving uh, the regulatory process. One area where I think there's still room for improvement is in the way in which cost-benefit analysis is done. So currently it's done uh, by the agencies who are writing the rules. Uh, and, you know, the truth is it's very hard for people or institutions to be completely objective about their own performance. I mean, in my own life, uh, I think many of my ideas are much better than they actually turn out to be. And I think having some independent evaluation uh, that's not done by the very people writing the rules would be a hel uh, healthy addition to the dynamic. I would switch from a system where the very agencies that write the rules provide the analysis that justify the rules. Uh, and instead, I would have complement their analysis with independent uh, analyses of what the costs and the benefits are of those regulations. It just doesn't work to have people only engage in self-evaluation. Conversations about regulatory reform are always so partisan and they inflame so many passions. So th is there a way we can get past that so that we have the right amount of reform and the right amount of regulation to make American life safe? This will just gin up all the old debates that have been lying there dormant for a long time about regulations kill jobs and regulations uh, are necessary to protect the lives of the American people. And it has the possibility of leading to a huge shouting match uh, with two people repeating the same lines that they've been saying for decades. And I, I think what would be the ideal outcome out of that is if we could find the third way. And the third way is really getting some, shining some sunshine and getting some sunlight on the system and figuring out what works and what doesn't and stopping the theoretical debates.
We're about to introduce a series of new regulations on the economy. They're going to be uh, to regulate greenhouse gases, to regulate the financial sector, to regulate the healthcare sector. And what we're, I think, seeing in the political system, both on the Hill and from the administration, is a desire to do that in a smart way. Uh, and there's a lot of good proposals out there. And I think where they all, what they're all coming from is that the current system is not, it's not working. Uh, the current system is based on guesses about how these regulations will work. And instead of guesses, we should be trying to base it on facts about the, where, the way the real world works. Stay up to date with the latest research, learn about Brookings events, and search our directory of experts, all from your mobile device. To download Brookings for your BlackBerry, Android, iPhone, or iPad, go to brookings.edu mobile.